Welcome to Hoover to Combat again. <laughs> I'm James and here your host Haley. Hey, what's up you guys? And Kenny. What's going on? Today we're talking about magic fundamentals and uh, why don't you explain more, Haley? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, everybody needs to calm down for a second. We need to, we need to group happen. up here. I'm on coffee number three. Uh, Kenny's on coffee number three. We're clearly all doing great tonight. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to this week's fundamental, or this month's fundamental episode. Uh, today we're going to be discussing card types, um, and we're going to be doing a slight review of some vocab that we have discussed before, um, just so you have a basis of what we're talking about. And that and be, it's super prevalent to the, what we're going over. It's super prevalent to what we're going over. So we're going over card types. So this is going to be um, what the different types of cards are, what the super types are, and what some of the subtypes are. So you have a pretty good understanding of every. Thing on a card in general. Yeah. Cool. That's the whole benefit. And as always, if you have comments or questions, constructive comments, preferably Ty, <laughs> then you can <laughs> post them in the stream chat and that I'll was a read call some out. of them on the line. That was a straight up call out. <laughs> We're not even trying to hide it anymore. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, all right. So let's start our presentation. So let's, let's bring it up. Uh, quick little... <laughs> It makes me so happy. I apologize. Kenny decided he wanted to help with slides this week, and this is what I get for letting him do anything. Uh, Memes quick. are the best. <laughs> Sorry, continue. I can't, I can't deal with any of this. <laughs> so we're going to be going over state-based activated ab actions, activated abilities, and triggered abilities as yes. our vocab review. And this will be super prevalent... Uh, as you realize as soon as we start going over stuff. So basically, um, state-based actions. It's a game action that happens automatically whenever certain conditions are met. Yeah, it doesn't use the stack at all. It just, it's it, it's there. So, like, if an effect is giving all creatures minus one, minus one, and you place a 1-1 mi one, one creature into play, that it creature dies. dies. Yes. You can't respond to it, it just dies. Uh, <laughs> moving on to activated abilities. An activated ability uh, is... Is a button. <laughs> That you push to do a thing. This is why Kenny doesn't help with the slide presentations, <laughs> and why I—I I, I think Ooh, that is what totally does this pertinent. Button do? Yes. <laughs> so, an activated ability is an ability where a cost must be met in order for it to take effect. It's usually written as like the cost, whatever it may be, whether it's paying two life, sacrificing a creature, paying mana, and then the effect, and then the activation instructions if there are any. So. It's pretty straightforward. You pay the cost, the thing happens. Yep, usually at instant speed. Uh, and then triggered abilities. Um, a triggered ability is one that automatically does something whenever a certain event occurs or a set of conditions is met. Uh, for example, <laughs> if you have a card that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, uh, this happens. Well, if a creature enters the battlefield, then that happens. It's triggered. Yep. So, uh, playing cards... It's clearly very triggered. <laughs> it triggers other cards. <laughs> you know it's hilarious. Next. <laughs> so we're going to be starting with super types. Um, <laughs> a super type is a uh, one of the types that will come before the main typing of the card. And we'll go over the main types of the cards. Um, but basically, you've got creatures, artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, lands, instant, and sorcery. So a super type will Oops. be named before that before it tells you what the card type itself is it'll say something like our first example of legendary, legendary. basically i just want to put my two cents on super types yeah um it's if you have a card type it describes the card type yeah basically That's the best way to, to describe it i guess um like uh prior to the card type being said yes uh but legendary is probably the most prevalent super type i want to say uh, I think you probably see it the other than like most. basic. Other than basic, you, you, I think you see legendary the most, and it's very mm -hmm. common, especially if you're a commander player. Um, you'll you yeah. definitely are familiar with legendary. Or like in this current standard, because there's so many legendary cards that are getting played. Yes, that is true. Um, so we have uh, a few different examples of legendary. Legendary permanent can be a lot of things um so for example each planeswalker has been errata so like the older ones it has it in the oracle text and all of the new ones that are printed all planeswalkers are legendary now mm -hmm. so uh and, and legendary means that you can only have one of a card with the same name mm -hmm. on your field at a time 
So you can have up to four of them in your deck as normal, but if you have, say, like Nico Bolas Dragon God, who is a legendary planeswalker, you cannot have two Nico Bolas Dragon Gods on the field at the same time. However, the legendary rule only applies to your board state, not your opponent's. So Correct. you can't. That was cha- that was a change they made a couple of years back. Uh, but your opponent can have an Eco Bulls Dragon God, and you can have an Eco Bulls Dragon God. It's just neither of you can have two. Exactly. Um, and so you'll see a variety of it comes on uh, legendary, comes on creatures, it comes on planeswalkers, and there are even some lands, legendary lands. For example, Gaia's Cradle, um, which you can tap to add green to your mana pool for each creature you control. You don't want somebody to have four of those on the field at the same time. You don't that want would someone just to have ridiculous. one of those. Well, yeah, but Ideally. I mean realistically you don't want them to have more than one um and then the other legendary permanent type that we have an example of that we thought was most prevalent to talk about is legendary sorceries because of how they function well except they're not permanents but legendary sorceries yeah um basically it just cares whether you have a um a creature or a legendary creature or planeswalker in play it's the only time you can cast it correct so you have to have something uh a legendary creature or Planeswalker on the field to be able to cast it in the first place. Hence, Legendary Sorcery It can only be cast when you have a Legendary. Yeah. Which is something that you can only have one of. At a time. At a time. On your field. Any questions? No? Great. Moving forward. <laughs> basics! So, you know those basic lands that you put in every one of your decks almost always? Unless you're playing five color like a crazy person? Yeah, those are... I think, except for Snowlands, are the the entirety of cards that have the word basic on them. And they are your plains, islands, swamps, mountains, and forests. We picked the really pretty, um, was it the unhinged? This is unstable. Unstable block, or unstable set, because we're bougie and have no self-control. Yeah, so you, you all, <laughs> we realized after we did it that they do not say basic land on them, but every other plains, island, swamp, mountain, forest that... It's not full art and just ridiculous, and we just do it because we think they're pretty. Uh, we'll say basic land, basic land, and then the land with type the, with the land type on it. Yep. Uh, and then um, another thing is snow. Uh, snow, you will see it. It's a uh, it's a super type, uh, yep. but it also um, functions as like um, a subtype almost. Like a sub, it was almost like a subtype because you'll see a lot of uh, cards. Um, hmm. They have either the snow thing or they need like snow t- covered permanents to function. So we mm-hmm. wanted to have examples of not only where you would see them in the game, but also like what they do. Yeah. Um. So mostly, you'll see a lot of uh, snow covered islands. It's a it's a basic snow land. Um. Mm-hmm. So they've got one for, uh, plains, islands, swamps, each mountain, of the five lands. Forest. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they're basic snowlands. They come with a snow-covered permanent. And um, two of the examples we have in which you will see it matter is, like, one is Scred. It deals damage to target creature equal to the number of snow permanents you control. So this it, is just a, an instance of when being yeah. a snow permanent matters. I believe Scred actually makes up one of the one of the um, red decks that you'll see floating around in Modern that plays nothing but snow-covered mountains. There is a, there is a Scred deck running around, yeah. Uh, but... Uh, Snow permanents also have this ability to add snow mana, which is mm-hmm. a specific type of mana that doesn't really care about color. It just has to come from a snow permanent. Yes. So in, in, in some cases, yes. Yeah, and it'll usually be represented as a snowflake on the card. Usually, yes. Um, because why why have a normal mana symbol when you can make it look like a snowflake? Because who doesn't yeah. like snowflakes? I haven't seen I I haven't seen anyone seriously play these since Ice Age though. Well, so. there's a really prevalent land in, that's played a lot in uh, monocolored decks called uh, Scrying Sheets, and it lets you you have to pay a snow mana one and tap it, and then you get to uh, look or you look at a le- you discard a card from your hand, and then you can look at the top two cards. Oh, that's pretty. And cool. put a land from among them into your hand. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. It's also become more prevalent again recently because we just had Modern Horizons come out not yeah, too long Modern ago. Yeah, Modern Horizons has and snow-covered stuff. And Modern it. Horizons introduced some more snow-covered permanents, including these pretty full-art snow-covered lands. They're really nice. Um, that came in every pack. And so it's it's somewhat prevalent. Like we said, there's a red scred deck that's running around in Modern right now um, that has seen play within the last year. Uh 
these new snow covered lands just came out which took i think some people by surprise yeah it also i mean if you guys want to run a whole bunch of snow covered lands the non-full art ones prices have dropped that because is true. of the full art ones existing to be fair though the full art ones aren't that expensive either they, they really range are. in the, like the one to maybe three dollar range yep and that's like three dollars on the high end I at think. least they're not as expensive as like foil unstable Artlands. Oh yeah, those are those are really expensive. <laughs> those are Although the pricey. foil snow covered full art lands have reached prices as well. Yeah. And they're not like astronomical, but I think I've seen they're them like there. 30, 30, 40. It's probably there. island. Probably. Uh the next uh tribal. super type. This is, is my tribal. favorite super type because I love tribal decks like a mm -hmm. weeb. Um I think it is important to note that um, this tribal super type, you can come across it if you play formats like Commander and such. Yeah, um, absolutely. But it is a super type that is no longer supported, or at least that's what Wizard said. So they, as of right now, it's it's more or less retired in the sense that they, as of right now, they don't intend to they, keep printing tribal stuff. Yeah, but they said that about protection, and they. Put protection in M20. Yeah, so I'm not trusting said, anything as, they say said, about retired right words. Now. Except for like one of my world. favorite cards is in this trio. I'm actually yeah. know which one it is. Um, but <laughs> tribal could be on any permanent or instant or sorcery. It just gives the it, that permanent that wouldn't be a creature that creature type. Yes. So for cards that care about like a number of merfolk, you could play like a Cometa, which doesn't specify that you're tapping merfolk creatures. You could play Marrow Commerce and tap it for one of Cometa's abilities. Uh, just because it says Merfolk on the card. Mm -hmm. Cloak and Dagger is the same with Rogues, and then all, uh, Eldrazi is the same thing for... Um, or All Us Dust is the same thing for Eldrazi. Yeah, um, so a good example of like what we mean by super types lies in these cards, too, because you see it where it's like it's a tribal artifact or a tribal enchantment or a tribal sorcery. Yeah. And then it also yeah has the has the type of the tribe that it's portraying. Yep. Uh, and this comes in handy with, with some cards uh, being readily A lot available. of the tribal synergy cards. A lot of the tribal synergy cards. Um, yeah, and it, it counts towards effects that care about specific creature types, like as Kenny brought up, mm -hmm. like when you have to tap a merfolk. Into Kometa. To into, like... into Kometa. It's a, it's a merfolk permanent. Yep. So So you could tap like Marrow Commerce, Kometa, and another merfolk to draw a card. Yes, exactly. And then they untap on your instant. Uh, next up is a retired. Yeah, we're not thing. gonna use. I don't think we're ever gonna see this super type ever again. <laughs> but it's on the super old enchantments, and if you play commander, you might see them. Um, that is true. Base what world basically is is it's an enchantment for everybody, mm -hmm. uh, but you can only have one world enchantment in the battle on the battlefield at a time. Correct. And the if someone else were to play another world enchantment, all of the world enchantments that were there before it go to the graveyard. They don't get destroyed, they just go away. Uh, and if two are played at the same time, then uh, the they both blow each other up. Yes. There, there can only be up to one. Period. Period. So it's like the legendary rule... But like the old legendary rule. Yeah, this actually except on a type. This it's actually just, took some research on our part because it's so obscure. Yeah, um, they haven't printed this in in quite some time. Um, and Vigit, visions was the last one. Yeah, visions was the last set in which we saw them printed. Uh, so that we we had to do a yeah, little bit I of research seen on this, this one. Since I was a kid. Yeah, Concordant Crossroads is actually played in commander i say is, i've definitely seen it played before in uh, fact i have a couple of them somewhere yeah it's, it's they're it's, good cards it's okay um a destruction clause built into your enchantments isn't great no <laughs> so yeah but uh a lot of really powerful effects around world enchantments just because they had a hard they didn't really know how to balance enchantments at that point in time well yeah and they do like these set up state-based effects mm -hmm. like on a global scale well normally enchantments a lot of uh current enchantments or like newer enchantments that they make will say um for you this happens well let's just talk about concordant crossroads for a minute it's like one green mana for an enchantment that gives everything haste yeah in green yeah it's really weird uh, but this is why we haven't seen it in a while because back then cards did I'm things that cards weren't supposed night. to do I'm more looking at the giant 1994 on the bottom. Well, yeah, it's it's alpha, but... That's 
not Alpha. Uh, 94? No, that's just, this is uh, that's Legends. That's Legends. Oh, is it Legends? Yeah. Well, yeah, hey, I knew symbol. something that you didn't know. The yeah. set symbol. I, I saw 94 and I thought Alpha. Um, but Legends, yeah. No, the set Alpha symbol was the like 92 or 90. Was Alpha 92? I thought it was 94. No, 4th edition was out before Legends was out. Oh. And I started playing in 4th edition, so okay. Alpha was 4 editions before. Well, last year was the 25th anniversary, mm-hmm. so, so whatever 2018 minus 25 is. Uh, I will, I I will math, calculate guys, this. Uh, and while he's calculating that... 98 minus 5, uh, 93. Yep, yeah, 1993. Yeah, 1993. So... See, yeah, I do know math. It's been a minute since we've seen something like this. It's retired. <laughs> but once again, if you're playing older formats, this is something that you might come yeah, across, which like, is why we wanted to hit on it. What, what did it go? Like Alpha, then Arabian Nights, and then Beta? It was like Alpha, Beta, Revised. When was Arabian Nights after Rise? Uh, it, was, it was like Moving before Moving on Homeworld. to the next thing. Right, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't <Yeah>. matter. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Ongoing. Nothing can stop me now. So ongoing is exclusive <laughs> to schemes, which is part of the Arch Enemy format. Yes, uh, and are... Arch Enemy is still a supported format, and some people do still play it. And they actually came out with Arch they Enemy Nico Bolas with... yeah. not too long ago, which is why we are discussing this. It's a lot of fun. I love playing. I love being the Arch Enemy because I'm always the Arch Enemy anyway. So what <laughs> is Arch Enemy for people that don't know? So for those who don't know, Arch Enemy is a format in which uh, everybody gangs up on one player. And the player, um, sorry, uh, the, the player gets access to two decks. Yeah, the player has access to their own magic deck and then what uh, the arch enemy deck, and um, they get special bonus effects for for taking their turn and playing on their own, and they get extra life because they have uh, three plus people attacking them all at the same time. And I believe the arch enemy actually gets a turn between each player, or is it around in a circle? No, it's around in a circle. Is it a circle? Unless I've been playing it wrong this whole time, oh. which is entirely possible. <laughs> um, but ongoing is exclusive to schemes, and schemes are in the Ex- scheme deck. <laughs> schemes are exclusive to Arch Enemy. Schemes are in the Arch Enemy deck, yes. Uh, so ongoing just means a scheme that doesn't discard itself after it's been used. Uh, yeah, so the ongoing, uh, it creates a state the, It creates state based effects, um, and it sticks around until the scheme is abandoned. Um, so typically with the arch enemy, your scheme is ongoing until either the ability on the card has been, or the clause on the card has been completed. Like it says, keep this until you do this. Um, for example, nothing can stop me now. This one says at the beginning of each end step, if you've been dealt five or more damage this turn, abandon the scheme. Then you abandon it and it's no longer ongoing. You know, what'd be fun. I kind of want to take a soundboard with different samples of maniacal laughter and then whenever you flip over an ongoing scheme, you play one of those samples. That's an idea for our next Arch Enemy game. <laughs> uh, but that's all the super types we're going to be discussing. So now we're going to move on to uh, regular types. Yeah. <laughs> um, and before we, we discuss what the different types are, we should probably um, go over the fact that like the, the first chunk of these that we're going to discuss are uh, what's considered permanent cards, mm-hmm. and I think that's uh, relevant to discuss. Um, permanents are cards that can be played at sorcery speed. Uh, they're not discarded after they're cast, so they stay on the battlefield. Um, they can be interacted with by other players, usually. There's always exceptions to every rule. I understand that if something has hexproof, you can't interact with it. Or shroud, yeah. 1v1, or like you can't single target it. Um, and then, uh, all but lands are spells on the stack that can't be countered. Yep, lands are the only exceptions in the permanent type, uh, just because they don't use the stack at all. They aren't spells in your deck, you just put them into play one at a time. Correct. Uh, and so the, the types of permanents that we're going to be going over are creatures, artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, and lands. And those are the five main types yep. of permanents. And then afterwards, we'll go over the the, the non permanent spells mm-hmm. that are types. Um, I, was, I was totally waiting for a comment from James about the picture, but he doesn't like Pokemon. No, I mean <laughs> I'm ignorant of Pokemon. I don't. I don't it's not that I don't like Pokemon. You you young whippersnappers snappers with your Pokemans. 
This is what I get when is, I let Kenny help with stuff. I'm. It's you should let Kenny help it, with stuff more often. Is, well, let me see awesome. if I got this right. Is it Evolutions of Eevee? Yeah, is yes. that what we're looking at? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I know that much, All but of that that took to a lot crap. of research to know that. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they all hate each other. It's great. Because oh, okay. cause they're all different types. Ha ha. I see what you did ha. there, Kenny. All, Moving wait, on to the first one. That's not time. a good message for children. Hey, everybody different hates each other. Why can't they all get along? <laughs> well, you one of them's Pokemon, getting along you? great. Yeah, one of them's hugging everyone in sight. Okay. We need to stay on topic. This is a Fundamentals episode, not Kenny put me hey, all over the slideshow episode. Three of my favorite cards right in a row. Okay, so starting with the creature type. Your creatures are the primary way that you typically would win the game. Yeah. You, you use creatures to attack your opponents to Man. bring their life total down to zero. Excuse me. I and then you up. block your opponent's creatures with your creatures. It's kind of the basics. That, that, was, that was a lovely, well thought out <laughs> sentence. You summon them like Pokemon, right? Yeah, and then you throw them at each other. <laughs> I select you, Chorizord. <laughs> Gotta select them all. <laughs> Once again, this is a Fundamentals episode of trying to be good, responsible, and explain stuff to newer players. Don't and lie to them. <laughs> I can't get anything done with you, too. <laughs> Vampire Nighthawk. Great card. So, creatures can come in variety of forms uh as you can see we've got vampire nighthawk who is a uh a two three creature baleful strix is an artifact creature and then athros god of passage is a legendary enchantment creature um so things can have more than one type and uh you also see that like artifact creature or like the legendary enchantment creature so you've got the super type and then it's got two types so these all somewhat cohesively go together yep and if something has two basic card types all cards that apply to either of those card types apply to that card so if something destroys an artifact it would destroy Bale baleful strix but baleful because strix, it is an artifact creature yep as as well as cards that would uh destroy creatures same thing goes for athreos if athreos wasn't indestructible things that would blow up enchantments would blow up athreos but if you've got something because it is indestructible so if you had something that exiled target enchantment yeah for some reason, you can exile this, would, this would exile an enchantment. And as long as the uh, devotion is met to make him a creature, because he says um, you have to have devotion to white and black at, at at least seven or above to make him a creature. If he is a creature, if you've got something that exiles target creature, it would also hit Atheros. Yep. Um, something else to discuss about creatures as well, how they function in the game. So... Um, Creatures last week we went, or last month, I should say, we went over the evergreen words. Um, I want to talk about the power and toughness for a second, how that works in terms yeah. of combat. I know that we went over that a little bit when we did um, Steps of a Turn mm -hmm. and how combat functions. Uh, but power and toughness is still super important, and it's something that a lot of new players struggle with. Uh, so, for example, Vampire Nighthawk is a 2-3, and when I say he's a 2-3, I mean he's got 2 power and 3 toughness. The power is how hard they hit, and toughness is how hard they can be hit. Yep, and as long as the creature's, to the creature's toughness, uh, as long as it's not reduced to zero within the turn, it resets to the starting number. So if you do two, two damage to a Vampire Nighthawk, if its toughness will go to one, but if you can't do any more damage to it within that turn, it'll become a 2-3 again. Yes, correct. Uh, same thing with, like, Athreos. Baleful Strix is a 1-1, one, one, so usually dies but usually if dies, there's something but it takes something it. down with it because it's got death touch and yeah. that's why i like it but yeah so that's just uh the easiest way that i find that always is the whole power is how hard they can hit toughness is how hard they can be hit yeah uh and that's super relevant to how things function within combat or mm -hmm. those of you who have played Yu-Gi-Oh, power is attack and toughness is defense yeah that works too <laughs> That works too, but you'd be, I, I don't know, I feel like, I i can't say anything though because I was confused about it when I was a new player okay. too. Okay, they should so, have just called it attack and defense from the beginning. I'm just they really should have, they say power and toughness, I was confused about it when I was a brand new Magic player too, so I can't say anything, but I did get confused about it and I understand why it's confusing, uh, but the easiest way i found to break it down to people is, is the, the punching and taking a punch. 
Yeah. Because yep. people understand taking a punch for some reason. I, I don't know. I, I can't. I can't make a joke out of that. <laughs> I'd love to. I um, can't. QI yeah. the tiger. Another note about creatures, um, unless they have the key, uh, the, the evergreen word, or the, the keyword ability of haste, they have summoning sickness when they, when they come in. When they enter yeah. the battlefield, the turn you play them, you cannot swing with them, you cannot activate You can't um, their do abilities. anything with them, until, except for block, until your next turn comes around. Anything that would require them to, to, tap. to so. tap for an ability, Yep, I mm. should say. So you can still do stuff like Convoke with them. Uh, mm-hmm. if, you, if you could, if something else to taps go, them, then if something else matter. taps them, it's okay. But if they have an ability that requires them to tap to activate said ability, they can't do that the turn you play them unless they have haste. Yep. And you cannot swing with them. As long turn. as it doesn't have the uh, the tap symbol or say, yeah, as long as it have the tap symbol. Yeah. If if it's got if it doesn't have a tap symbol, like for example, you just have to pay like um, two mana to give it plus one plus zero. Oh. Or you can even, pay that two mana the turn it comes out, that's fine. Or even if it says, like, in words, tap this creature, summoning sickness doesn't matter, because the effect is tapping it, and the creature is not tapping. Yes. Which mm-hmm. is weird, and rules It's lawyer-y, really weird, but and that's how it works. and confusing, but you don't see that that often, so... Um, next up, we have just straight artifacts. So mm-hmm. Artifacts are... Well, artifacts. They're basically magic's take on machines. Um... We kind of, they're, they're most pop, what they see most is usually like static abilities that do something kind of nut, nutty, or an activated ability because artifacts don't get summoning sickness like creatures do. Mm-hmm. And they're usually colorless. Unless of course they're artifact creatures, then unless, they still have summoning sickness. Unless they're artifact creatures. But the artifacts that aren't creatures don't get summoning sickness. Uh, they're just, you know, like, you, you make a machine and then you can use the machine as soon as you make it. Yeah, so but, for example, Soul Ring. Soul Ring, yeah. You play it for one, and then you can tap it for two, and that's why it's banned in almost every format except Commander. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a little good. Um, and then there's these really cool... There's a lot of um, artifacts with static abilities, like Paradox Engine, uh, that just have a static ability or a triggered ability that happens whenever you do a thing. Um, and Paradox Engine, the reason it was banned in Commander today is uh, whenever you cast a spell, you untap all non-land permanency control. S- including, like, mana rocks like Soul Ring. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's just, like, a static yeah. ability. Um, Otherwise, this things is... fall under every rule that permanents, like, creatures fall under, for the most part. Correct. You can only cast them at uh, a sorcery, sorcery speed. speed. Yep. You can play as many as you've got the mana to play per turn. Um, uh, you should say, like, artifacts typically are colorless and this throws some people off not a, every artifact is colorless some of them do have color and take colored yeah. mana to cast and that throws some people off and i'm not quite sure why but it's okay we're all learning together mm-hmm. um yeah some of them can be cast for colored mana and that doesn't make it any less of an artifact but it does make it so that if um something is uh targeting white spells specifically it, yeah, does it does count as a white spell at that point. Yep. It doesn't, even if it's an artifact. Uh, it, so it's like the same thing with like artifact creatures. If something can destroy an artifact, it can destroy the artifact creature. If it can destroy a creature, it can destroy the artifact creature. Same yeah. thing happens when they change colors. Yep. <clears throat> uh, next up, we have enchantments. These are my favorite permanent type. Uh, enchantments are sort of similar to artifacts in the sense that... Um, when they come out, they have some sort of effect that they can do or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, they usually have state-based or triggered abilities, um, and they're a little bit harder to interact with, typically. Yeah, only white and green really get clean ways to interact with enchantments. Blue, black, and red can't really do anything. As opposed to enchantments, where you see enchantment removal in like red, blue white and green mm-hmm. in like four different colors so it just makes enchantments a, a safer non-creature permanent to play for an effect that you want yeah and i think uh enchantments are also interesting in the sense too where it's like um just for example we've got cathar's crusade which is an enchantment that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control you get to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control this is an effect that will take place during the whole game it will continuously yeah. do so 
for as long as you are able to meet the requirements of, yeah. of whatever the ability on it is. Yeah, the best way I like to think of it is like you're adding different clauses to the game mm -hmm. when you play an enchantment, whereas artifacts, you're kind of adding like a whole bunch of switches and knobs that you can push and pull as you need to. Correct. Uh, I think it's uh, so, and like, so you've got the, the Cathar's Crusade, which kind of has like a global effect that's going throughout the whole game until it gets removed, where it's like, versus you've got something like Kaylan of the Heart Expedition, which has a landfall trigger that says whenever uh, a land enters the field, you can put a quest counter on it, and you can remove three quest counters from it to sack it and search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them on your battlefield tapped. Um, that's really good. It's just different, because it's got... It's doing its effect, and it's doing it essentially for free. Yeah. You cast it, and this is an effect that keeps taking place, much like Cathar's Crusade. But this one has, like, a time limit on it. So it comes out, and it does its function, and then it goes away. Yeah. Uh, one thing to remember is that, unlike artifacts, which are generally easier to play because they're mostly colorless, mm -hmm. enchantments are almost entirely colored. Uh, so they're kind of restricted to the colors that they're in. Correct. Like, you can't play, a, a, like, Cather's Crusade without enough white mana to do so, and you can't play Calumny Heart Expedition without the green mana to do so. Whereas, like, Soul Ring, you can play for, with any colored deck, and same with Paradox Engine. Yeah, most artifacts can fit into any deck, um, just because you, you don't need a specific type of mana to cast them. Their effect just happens. Mm -hmm. um, or, like, you can, you can just play them and basically whatever deck you want with very minor exceptions um whereas enchantments are specialized into certain decks yes yeah um and then yeah you can also have enchantment creatures like, i know we discussed that yeah, earlier but like with athreos yeah mm -hmm. Athros, uh there's another one chromanticore um and they've got some cool stuff on them too uh we just wanted to give you a variety of mm -hmm. examples so you you had an idea of what these look like in, in play yep uh, okay. Next up, Planeswalkers. Planeswalkers. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> my favorite card type. Yeah, Planeswalkers are almost entirely legendary. Uh, there are some card exceptions, but not the actual Planeswalkers themselves. So, so to clarify what you just said, because you said it wrong. I did say it wrong. Uh, and I don't okay. mean to call you so like that. So, all but... Planeswalkers are legendary except for an effect on one Planeswalker, and then like Spark Double. Yeah. So. <laughs> All, all Planeswalkers are legendary unless otherwise specified, Yeah, I should say. So, for example, there is a Jace that makes non-legendary copies of himself. Uh, Spark Double can make a copy of a Planeswalker um, that would be non-legendary. Um, but standard, you're playing a Planeswalker card, that Planeswalker card is legendary. Yes. Um, Period. All Planeswalkers have a Planeswalker type. Yes. And except for I think the Wanderer. Well, she's the Planeswalker type. She just doesn't have a. She subtype, doesn't have like which a we'll subtype. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Um, and they do a variety of different things. You can only activate like one of their abilities. Like you can pick one of their abilities to activate once a turn. Okay. It, so. Okay. I, I don't mean let's, you're. Let's let's back up. Let's let's. Okay. So okay. let's back up the beginning. So okay, planes planes walker, Planeswalkers. A Planeswalker is basically a character card. Yes. Correct. You get to play a, a named character from the Magic Universe out there, which is why they're so cool. Each Planeswalker has loyalty abilities, which go up and down, or cost zero, and affect something on the, on the battlefield. Yeah, and no they have a starting loyalty counter that indicates what you're counting from up or down when you apply loyalty. Yes, Absolutely. thank you. Thank you. You're we welcome. Need, we needed a chance to come <laughs> We needed help. Um, so... But so, they can do a variety yes. of different things. Basically, to to continue on what James has said, you, you play the Planeswalker. It's got a loyalty uh, counter in the bottom. That's, that's the it's, right. It starts, the with, right -hand it starts with loyalty point, or basically loyalty points that you use for its abilities. Correct. And, and then it's each ability either adds or takes away points. One at a time, please. Sorry. <laughs> we need to slow it down because planeswalkers are one of the the most complicated ones, things. The most complicated things in this game. So yeah. we need to like calm down and talk about this and not get so you can have Kenny. So for the new players, you can have as many planeswalkers as you want out in the battlefield, but you can only have one planeswalker of each name. Correct. So for instance, I can have Jace the Mind Sculptor out, but I can't have two Jace the Mind Sculptors out. 
but I can have Jace the Mind Sculptor and another Jace and of a like different name. Jason Rattler of Secrets. Jason Rattler yeah. of Secrets or Jace Memory of Deb. Yes. Which, uh, as long as it's not the Mind Sculptor. But that comes from them being legendary permanents. Yeah. So when you cast a Planeswalker, the amount of loyalty points that they have is listed in the bottom right-hand corner. That is how much loyalty they have to begin with. So, for example, we're going to use Jace the Mind Sculptor. He's four mana for three loyalty. So he comes out with three loyalty. The turn that you play them, you can activate one of these loyalty abilities. You can only activate a loyalty ability for how many loyalty points you have, though. So he's got a a plus two ability, a zero ability, a minus one ability, and a minus 12 ability. And you can only do that once per turn. Yes, once per turn at sorcery speed. Right. Um, so for example, the first turn you play and when he's got three loyalty, you're not going to be able to do that minus 12 ability. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. You don't have the loyalty to pay to be able to activate that ability. Yeah. And, and what you, you kind of glossed over something I think new players don't understand too. You can only play this during your turn. Yeah. Like, I just so want to hammer in that whole Play that at sorcery speed. Because like I've seen many permanent. new players think you can play it at instant speed mm-hmm. on your opponent's turn, which is wrong unless otherwise stated. Yeah. Because there's, there's a fairy out there speed. that can do it. Like every other permanent. Yeah. For the majority of the game. You can activate right. them once per turn at sorcery speed. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then you uh, can do it's, it each turn. Yeah. So using Jason as, as an example, he comes in with three. You can activate his plus two, and then he would have five loyalty. Correct. You could activate his zero, he would stay at three, or you can activate his minus one, and he would go to two loyalty. Correct. Mm-hmm. And now another important thing to note about Planeswalkers as well is the fact that their loyalty kind of acts as their life. So when their loyalty reaches zero for whatever reason, they die. Yep. They go to the graveyard. Yeah, they go They go to the graveyard, they die. Um, they also are kind of unique in how they work in combat. So normally, when combat, you would declare that you were attacking a player. Then that player would decide whether or not they're going to block, if they're going to take the damage. You don't attack the creatures directly. Planeswalkers are different in the sense that you can send cre- creatures directly at Planeswalkers for combat damage. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you can choose to attack a player, or you can choose to attack their Planeswalkers. Or if you've got enough creatures, both. Or if you've got enough creatures, both. Correct. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, just like normal combat, your opponent can decide if they want to use their creatures to block for their Planeswalker or not. Yeah. And then... Combat damage would function as normal. So if you're swinging at a at a two two at my Jace that's at five loyalty, and I don't block it, it's gonna take that two damage and go down to three loyalty. Mm-hmm. So just strategy wise, what Planeswalkers do is they effectively let you multi process on your turn. They let you do value added stuff on your turn for free. Yeah, uh, like that. It's like having another player on your team. And the only reason I'm like badgering this home is because i used to play with somebody that was like all planeswalkers are overpowered blah blah and it, that's not and when you're not a new all. player at first it might seem that way but when you your experienced player they're pretty they're, they're pretty vulnerable to be honest it comes down to judging how much value the opponent will get out of it right threat assessment so yes. like jace the mind sculptor he's minus he's a his three loyalty right if you don't care so like his plus three if you don't have a whole bunch of creatures in play that he can, or if you have too many creatures in play for him to interact with, then um, the minus one isn't a problem because it only returns one creature. Right. You're more worried about the plus two because he can, or the or the zero because he can either decide what you're going to draw that turn, um, or what he's going to, or what that player is going to draw. Like the player that right. controls him is going to draw that turn, or he's going to draw three cards. Which are the two more dangerous options when you've got too many creatures for him to interact with. I right. usually use Jace's plus two ability to look at my opponent's top card of their you deck. You can also do that. Yes. Um, the reason I like playing Planeswalkers so much is just because they do add that free value, um, kind of in the sense that enchantments do, where it's like something is happening for free that you're not paying for. You paid for it once, mm-hmm. and then now every turn, every time you do a specific thing, um, in the case of Planeswalkers, it's like once per turn most of the time, yeah. uh, you're getting that added value per turn that you paid for last turn, two turns ago, three turns ago, so you're getting it for free now. And they used to be almost as hard to interact with us, like, as lands. Before, used like, to be. Before <laughs> War of the Spark. Before they realized how powerful Planeswalkers Yeah, before, before War of the Spark, um, like, if you weren't playing creatures or red, 
you were having a hard time interacting with planeswalkers in any sort of form or fashion. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, like, sometimes planeswalkers will just be like, oh, I'm at this huge creature now. Or, oh, I just make creatures. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. one, uh, a couple more things that we want to discuss about planeswalkers, why we've got three different ones up here as examples. Um, using Gideon. Uh, Gideon's not the only planeswalker that does it. Uh, Sarkhan does it, and... Um, Several Gideon. Nissa, do. Gideon, and Sarkhan are the big ones. Yeah. Um, what they can do is they, uh, Gideon specifically, this one, um, Ally of Zendikar, he's got a zero ability, or a plus one ability that says until end of turn, Gideon, Ally of Zendikar becomes a 5 5 human soldier ally creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker, prevent all damage that would be done to him this turn. Yeah. He turns himself into a functioning creature. So it's, like, rules for creatures still apply to him. Yes, and that applies to anything that turns itself into a creature that isn't a creature beforehand. Correct. So, for example, this, if you play him, uh, say, turn four, because that's when you've got four mana and he comes out mm -hmm. and you plus one him, you can't swing with him because he still has summoning sickness. Yeah. You can turn him into a creature to plus him if you want, absolutely, but... Just know that you cannot swing with him because he does still have summoning sickness. Normal creature rules still apply regardless of the fact that he's a planeswalker. Yep. Yep. And then we also have Teferi, Teferi up here. Which a... shows like an enchantment effect almost on yeah. Yeah. planeswalker. The static abilities that were added from uh, added as an extra layer to planeswalker design from War of the Spark. Correct. I think all of them had a static. And War in the Spark. And War in the, the Spark, yes, all of them um, have a static ability. Teferi specifically... Uh, He'll sit there and he does a thing without actually doing a thing by stopping your opponents from casting thing, casting spells at instant speed. And then he does have two activated abilities, but he kind of the way they they traded that off was specifically for like the non mythic planeswalkers was to take away an oath effect or uh, an ultimate effect. So like no minus twelve uh, like on Jace or the minus four on Gideon. All he does is he'll bounce a thing and draw you a card, or he'll just let you cast sorcery speeds at instant speed. Correct, but it is still important to note that there are planeswalkers out there that have these static abilities, and they function uh, even more like enchantments than a, a planeswalker normally would, because yeah. that static ability, um, unlike its loyalty abilities, which you can only activate once again, once per turn at sorcery speed, and I cannot stress that enough, Yeah. Um, this static ability will take effect at all times, because that's what it is. It's, yeah, it's state-based. It, it's state-based. It's, state -based. it's a static ability. It's always being checked for... Um, so it will always take effect for as long as that permanent remains on the field. Yeah, and those of you playing Standard right now, if you're watching this, like Teferi and Narset are the big boogeymen of Standard for Planeswalkers. So. Yeah. Well, I think the coolest thing about Planeswalkers as a new player is that this is a chance to play with the lore of magic. I mean, these are like real characters in the story of magic that you get to flip out and say, you know, Jace is on my team now. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's it's got a coolness angle that, you know, a basic creature or a one shot instant won't Yeah. Doesn't yeah. have. The and way that I explain planeswalkers to a lot of people is like they're your buddy on the field. So they're mm -hmm. giving you extra support and they're helping take some of the heat off you in combat. Um, because people might think that they're a bigger threat, so they might go after your planeswalker as opposed to you, um, and they just do extra stuff for you. So cool. if you're a new player, don't get intimidated by planeswalkers. Just and remember, you can always ask your buddy or your magic judge for help if you don't understand a card. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, can we just take a second to talk about the oathbreaker format? Since no, we're, we're not going to do that right now. This is <laughs> fundamentals. We're not worried about that at no. this moment. No. No. Next. Next, Next, we have lands. Lands! So lands are the most important card in your deck. Most important card Arguably. type. Arguably. Uh, because they let you cast the other thing cards that you want to play. Uh, right. For the most part. We so, do have a land that doesn't produce mana up here. Yes, so um, not all lands produce mana, and that's important to note. Um, some important things about lands is you can only play one per turn at sorcery speed. So you can play a land every turn... Um, so every turn you'll you'll end up getting more mana. Um, your lands are where your mana comes from. They they basically are the money that you pay to play your cards. They're your resources. They're your yeah. resources. Mm -hmm. um, They're your biggest resource. Generally, all lands have a land type uh, of some kind. Um, they'll either have the land type or forest, island, mountain plains, uh, creature, swamp, creature. Well, swamp um, or like uh, waste. Yeah. Is the, the the newest basic land type. 
we do have uh, a creature land up here, which was from Future Sight, that uh, was when Magic was kind of playing with the color pie and card types and those kind of mechanics. Mm -hmm. And it's Dryad Arbor. It comes down as a land, and it is a forest, but it's also a 1-1 one -one creature, which forest. means it suffers from summoning sickness because it's a creature. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also, it's a target. it can be targeted by things that destroy lands. So Yes. Um, another one we have up here is Maze of Ith. It is a land that doesn't produce mana. So you tap it to untap a target attacking creature and prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and dealt by that creature this turn. So it, it still functions in a land slot, but it doesn't produce any mana for you. Yep, and like Maze of Ith, the fetch lands like Evolving Wilds, Termorphic Expanse, uh, those kind of lands, a lot of the lands that didn't produce mana were actually printed during the earlier sets of magic because they realized they needed lands to kind of produce mana. That's true. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to slow down the format a little bit more after Urza block. Yes. Uh, more commonly, like, nowadays, uh, you would see, like, some sort of card that would have, like, a, an ability like Maze of Ith, but it can also tap to produce a colorless mana, or there's ones that are specialized mm -hmm. in colors where, like... Um, sort of like Dryad Arbor, where we call them Manlands, where they tap to add mana, or you can pay X cost to turn them into a creature. Yep. And usually those lands that have an ability will come and play tapped. To usually. Kind of, Not kind of, always. To usually. kind of enforce summoning sickness without having to have put summoning sickness on lands. Correct. Right. Uh, it's also important to note that lands are technically colorless permanents. They are. They do not have a mana cost. Well, Dryad Arbor is green, but yeah. most lands don't have a mana cost, therefore they are colorless. Correct. And, and yeah, lands, they're your biggest resource, um, other than your life total, of course. So your, your lands are an important part of your deck, and you can't do anything without land and magic. For the most part, yeah. For the most part. You guys could have used the Rixmethies in this. Uh, <laughs> we could have also used Merit Lage. Yeah. All right, next. <laughs> Moving on to the uh, non-permanent types. Uh -huh. We start with instants. Instants and sorceries. So instants can be played at instant speed. They're they're not permanent, so they don't stay in play after you play them. They go to the graveyard or exile if they say they go to exile. Mm -hmm. uh, but they can be played anytime an instant could be played. Uh, they have their own speed they can be played at. Uh, and that's usually any time during the game in response to what an opponent is doing. Yes, it, it's at literally almost any point in time in the game. You can yeah. play an instant spell. Um, you can respond to like each phase of a turn. Uh, you, can, you can respond to several different things. So we've got a couple different examples of how instants uh, function here. Um, one example is Nexus of Fate. So it's an instant that does a lot of stuff. Um, for example, this one takes an extra turn, and if it would be put from a great uh, into a graveyard from anywhere, you reveal it and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. Oh. Um, so this is an instant that does something big. I just want to say, blue and red kind of thrive on instants. Absolutely. Um, most both actually, yeah, <laughs> uh, just in different ways. Uh, yes. Red is usually just trying to make the opponent react, and then blue is the color that's reacting. Yes. But Expedite and Counterspell are two very similar cards in that they're fairly cheap instant speed spells uh, that have a substantial effect. Expedite gives a creature haste and then draws you a card, which means the creature loses summoning sickness, sickness and you can attack with it whenever, and then it, it replaces itself. And then Counterspell, uh, it counters a spell. It's just two blue mana, you stop a spell on the stack from happening. Correct. Um, so, like, right there you can kind of see like a variety of functions of what instants do um and how they differ from color to color but also like kind of the power of what they can do mm -hmm. so like counter spell it, you're you're reacting to what your opponent is doing they're playing a spell you don't like that spell now it's countered yeah they're usually instants are usually going to have a little bit more subtle effects mm -hmm. than sorceries will because you're playing them at any time so they're not going to do as much for you because of the speed bump correct but they're kind of your bag of tricks they're definitely your bag of tricks. There's a reason we call like a lot of red instants or a lot of green instants combat tricks. Like the ones mm -hmm. that'll give you um, plus two, plus two until end of turn. Yeah, usually it'll help. Uh, they almost act as removal spells sometimes. Sometimes. There, there are some removal. Um, yeah, but instants, un unlike sorcery speed stuff, like the stuff you can only play during your main phases, you can play instants during your opponent's turn, during your turn, anytime you want. 
pretty much they, they do a lot for you. Yeah. You're playing an instant on your turn, you're losing the game, or you're not playing it right. Yeah. So always play them as late as possible. Yes. Don't don't go trigger uh, happy. And then mm-hmm. adversely to instants, we have sorceries. Sorceries mm-hmm. are the other non on non permanent card type. Correct. So so just like instants, you cast them, they do their effect, and then they go to the graveyard, unless otherwise stated, obviously. Um Sorceries tend to be a little slower because you do have to cast them on their main phase, um, but sometimes they have bigger effects. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, we've got Planar Cleansing, which is six mana, and it's sorcery, so you have to play it on your turn, but it destroys all non-land permanents. So it's just a board wipe. It's just kill everything. They kill everything that's not a land. I, I do want to say here that it seems like green, black, and white thrive on sorceries, whereas blue and red thrive on instants. Usually, Yeah. No, we say that as we have an example. As we have of a, a, a red, red and blue, blue sorcery, sorcery up, here. On, up here, but that's that's my observation after playing for a couple of years. They they thrive off of them, yes. Um, but also, so when we say um, that sorceries tend to do a little bit more, or they give you like sometimes extra effects for having to play them on your turn. Um, Lava coil is a good example of that. So it's a two mana sorcery, and it deals four damage to target creature. But if that creature would die this turn, you exile it instead. So this yeah. is really good in standard right now when you've got a bunch of Phoenix decks floating around. Because yeah. you deal the four damage to it, so it exiles. So yes, you're doing it on your turn, and you might be spending your whole turn two to do it, but you just got rid of something permanently. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, you're gonna just going to see, like, normally two mana in red is going to do three damage anywhere. Yeah, but at, at, at instant speed. At instant speed. But uh, they, they slowed down the same mana cost, and they gave it four damage, and then it exiles whatever it kills. Yes. So, and then we've got Blatant Thievery, which is a, kind of a feel-bad card uh, for everyone else. It's triple blue and four, and then you get to gain control of each uh, a permanent each player controls. Yes. Uh, each opponent controls. And those big splashy effects are usually where you're going to see the sorcery tag on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it gives you more of like a... At least blatant thievery you, you is kind of more of like a late. Yeah. It, you can kind of windmill slam them. They're usually later game effects, um, at least on the big big sorceries. So for like blatant thievery, this is potentially a win condition. Yeah. So you're spent. You're you're taking off your turn seven, and you're spending all of that mana on turn seven, but you're gaining a permanent that each player controls that could just progress you that much further. Yep. Cards like Blatant Thievery, Rise of the Dark Realms, Genesis Wave. <coughs> I love the flavor text on both of those cards. Yeah. It's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Dinosaurs like shiny things. And and uh, we took her ashes into custody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's the last of like the main types. And then we've got subtypes, which we're going to discuss a little more generally. Um there, there are some specific subtypes that are super important, uh, but generally speaking, our first one is creature subtypes. So this is when you're speaking specifically to um, what type of creature it is. So we put up the uh, creature tokens as examples. Um, so you have a zombie. It's a creature that is a zombie. That is a cool zombie. I yes. didn't realize how cool that artwork was. Uh, and it then makes just, me kind of happy. Just like for the goblin, <laughs> uh, it's a creature that is a goblin yep um there are lots of different creature types there are probably hundreds yeah we're not gonna them. go over all we're of not them it's not worth it yeah no but it, it'll come after creature it'll tell you exactly what yeah. kind of type of creature it is um and it applies to stuff where it's like spells and effects care about a specific creature type and this is the the subtype that it will look at when dealing with that so for example fiery cannonade Fiery Cannonade deals two damage to each non-pirate creature. So basically, it's saying, is this creature not a pi- not a pirate? No? Cool, it takes two. If it is a pirate, it doesn't take anything. Correct. So so it's specifically checking for the, the pirate creature subtype. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's super important, a lot of things. This is where tribal comes from. Um, like yeah, you'll a, see like a tribal lot of... something, usually, when you're speaking to, to creature types. Yeah, you'll usually see effects that'll be like, Soldiers you control get plus one, plus one, or, like, goblins you control get haste. Yeah. And it'll check, and if the creature's not a goblin, then it won't get haste. Correct. 
Uh, so, like I said, there's there's hundreds of these. We're not going to go over all of them, but know that it, it will say it'll have creature dash creature type. Yeah. Uh, on almost all creatures, if not all of them. The reason I had Hydroid Crasis up there on the slide type slide was because most of the cards have three to four creature types, and it's weird it's jellyfish <laughs> hydra beast it's, it's jelly it's a jellyfish hydra beast it's like it's oh it's ridiculous it's so cool but it's ridiculous um and then, i also think it's an ooze <laughs> i don't think it is but i could be wrong don't quote me i don't know hydra crisis is exactly thirty thousand creature types um, we could have just called it a mutant they nope. could have, but that would have been too easy. It's too easy for Simic. They need to specify exactly what it's a mutant of. Yes. Like what its parts are made out of. Right, there there was like there was an Amonkhet card where it was like a crocodile warrior beast monster. And I was like, nope, this is too much. We don't care. Uh, next, next up. up. Hey, planeswalker types. Yes. Usually the planeswalker name. Uh, so if a card's at like almost Lilia, always the planeswalker, always al almost always the planeswalker name. Most planeswalkers will have a name accompanying them after the after the planeswalker card type, at like Liliana and Chandra, for example. And then there are cards like Liliana's Triumph that care that you have a Liliana planeswalker in play, mm -hmm. and it will basically just check that card type. Yeah, they function. Planeswalker types function very much like creature types do. Um, almost exactly like almost, creature types. Yeah. Exactly like they do. Uh, like, all Chandras are gonna have the Chandra subtype. In fact, there's only one Planeswalker the Wanderer, that I yeah. know of off the top of my head is the Wanderer that does not have a Planeswalker subtype. Yep. <clears throat> and that's just because the Wanderer is the Wanderer. We don't know the Wanderer's actual name. Yep. Um, but every single Lily, whether it's Liliana the Veil, uh, Liliana Death's Majesty, Liliana the Last Hope, will be a Planeswalker dash Liliana. It's a Liliana. And that's all that cards like Liliana's Triumph check for. So it's if you control yep. Liliana Planeswalker. So it like, doesn't matter which Liliana. The Triumph you Cycle um, yep. and the uh, Defeats. Yes. There there are several things that check for the, the Planeswalkers like that. Yep. Uh, next up. He auras. got Auras. So Auras are a special type of enchantment. Yes. Basically when an Aura is on the stack, you choose a an appropriate like target for it. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes into play, it attaches to that target. So, like, Rancor requires that you need to target a creature when you play Rancor. And then Gift of Paradise requires a land um, while they're on the stack. And in order to cast them as well. Correct. Uh, similar to, like, an instant or sorcery that require a target. But if the permanent that's targeting it, it leaves play while either is on the stack, then or while they're attached to it, then the, the aura leaves play as well. Mm-hmm. Um, because it has nothing attached to it. Correct. Uh, so, for example, with Rancor, uh, you enchant a creature, creature dies, Rancor goes to your graveyard, creature gets bounced back to your hand, Rancor goes to the graveyard, etc., etc. Yep. Um, um, and and Auras can enchant a variety of things. Yep. It's kind of uh, like players. Couple. Lands, mm -hmm. artifacts, players. Uh, I don't believe you can enchant enchantments with Auras. Yes. Yeah, uh, there's an enchant Oh, enchant permanence. Enchant permanence can be yeah. Auras. Yep. Um, like uh, what entrapped in the moon or something imprisoned in the moon, uh, and then uh, rancor. It, usually they're enchanting creatures. Or Astrid lands. also has um, enchant enchantment. Permanent. Yep. Enchant permanent. So, um, enchantments can or the auras can enchant a variety of things. But the difference between like it and a regular enchantment and aura enchantment is because uh, an aura enchantment needs something Atta to, to attach, attach to. Attach to. Yeah. It needs something to enchant. Yes. Uh, as opposed to normal enchantments, which just kind of sit on the board and give you an effect. Um, you need to have, like, something in play for the aura to be used. Correct. Cool. Uh, next up, equipment. Equipment is a uh, variation of artifact. Um, it pretty much it will always have the equipped ability. Um, and the equipped ability can be uh, activated at sorcery speed. Uh, it usually needs to target a creature. In mm -hmm. fact, I don't think there's a, a ton of instances in which it doesn't target a creature because the yeah. ability very specifically says uh, yeah. creature, so there's very, very, very few exceptions to this. But it'll have, like, equipped and then some sort of cost. Um, so, for example, Sword of Light and Shadow is equipped to you pay two mana 
and you can equip it to a creature. Yeah. And that creature will have the now have like the abilities of the equipment. Equip is also an activated ability. So Correct. anything that interacts with activated abilities happening can inter- can stop that. Um, and if you lose the creature that is equipped to the equipment or the equipment's attached to, then you don't lose the equipment as well. That you just correct. keep it, and then you can move it on to something else. So like unlike what, auras... Yeah. All right, I mean, it cuts No, it's off. fine. Uh, unlike auras, where whenever whatever the aura is attached to leaves, mm-hmm. the aura has more or less dies, your equipment doesn't die, unless they have something that destroys target artifact or, or something of that nature. Yeah, and that's kind of why equipment's generally considered to be better than auras, uh, at least attaching to creatures, because creatures are destroyed so easily. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't lose two things for one removal spell. Correct. <laughs> um, it's also uh, good to note that like an equipment is a separate permanent from the creature that it's attached to as well. Yeah. And and that might sound like redundant to say, um, but we discussed it when we discussed uh, evergreen words. So if somebody were to steal your creature and your creature they gain control of it and it has an equipment attached to it that equipment still belongs to you it just happens yep. to be on that creature at this moment in time absolutely uh so you can when it gets back to your turn you can pay the mana and move it to another creature you control yes and um, equip can only happen at sorcery speed yes and I generally not know that yeah it's only at sorcery speed unless stated otherwise there's some cards that give them well i, I knew speed. that but i did not but, know, know the, the, that you still controlled it that's just yeah, oh, you yeah. absolutely still control it yeah the equipment um, is still yours to to control and move i've never had that happen so i've never had that come up that's because you so. don't play voltron decks <laughs> yeah i know i don't play voltron uh but generally uh you have to do it into speed or sorcery speed and you generally have to have a creature to equip to that you control Yes. Um, it's very, very rare that you'll have equipment that says just equip to a creature and opponent controls because equip is generally attaching to a yeah. creature. You, uh, you equip actually, if I'm not, board. yeah, equip if I'm not mistaken actually says to a creature you control, attached like in the rules control. text, it says attached to a creature you control. Um, and this counts too, like if you're playing teams magic, um, so you have a teammate that yeah. you're sharing a board with, your equipment cannot equip to one of their creatures. No, you it have has to, to equip be a creature to one of yours. You control. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, equipment's really fun. It's it's yeah. a nifty little thing. Uh, we included a couple different things. Uh, specific, the, the, the one that we probably should talk about is the living weapon equipments. Yes. Because they come in with a token attached to it. Mm-hmm. And that basically turns the token into whatever the equipment is. So like Batter Skull, the, the token itself is zero zero. So once it leaves the equipment, then it dies. Yes. But... Uh, it gets all the stat boosts and the abilities, and generally, uh, the living weapon equipment are pretty strong and have very expensive equip costs. Mm-hmm. But but once again, even though they do come in with a token on them, so they're already like a creature sort of rearing and ready to go. Once that creature leaves, you still have the equipment. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. Uh, next up, and actually last vehicles. up, vehicles. Fun! So, vehicles are kind of like, I want to say a mix of an equipment and a creature. Yeah, sort of. Uh, or kind of like Magic's take on banding, almost. Where you take a bunch of creatures, and then you act, you make one creature out of it. Did you just utter the B word? I did utter did banding. Utter the B and word. the reason I'm saying this is because of the way crew works. So, well, it's not it's, it doesn't... People. By bringing up an obsolete term that we don't want Well, to I'm not going to bring it up specifically, but you're basically <laughs> combining... I simplified it. It's like you're combining okay. a bunch of creatures into one creature. Right. Well, well that cr- generally has a better stat line and stronger abilities. S- so if you're new, uh, if every, every vehicle, excuse me, has a crew cost, and you need to have that total power to crew that vehicle. Yes. Uh, and they all, all vehicles generally have a power a caveat already. So... Let's, At least let's, that power. let's take a step back and simplify this even a little further, yeah. okay? So so vehicles, when they first get played on the field, um, with few exceptions, like I said, there's exceptions to every rule, but mm-hmm. when it enters the battlefield, its subtype is, in fact, a vehicle, but it is still just an artifact. It is not an artifact creature yet. No. The thing that makes it a vehicle and what can make it a creature is this thing it's got called a crew ability, and it'll say crew X. So, for example, we have Smuggler's Copter up there. Uh, it's got an ability that's crew one. One is equal to the amount of power 
that you have to be able to tap on a creature that you control that is untapped to make yep. Smuggler's Copter a creature. So if you've got a 1-1 one, one toughness guy or 1-1... One, one, Oh, a, a creature with a at creature least with one power. One. Yeah, a creature with at least one power. So you've got a creature, he's a 1-1, one, one. you tap it to crew Smuggler's Copter, and then Smuggler's Copter becomes a 3-3 three, three with flying, and it gets its ability. Yep. Uh, crew, unlike, like, equip, it is sort of instant speed, so you can do it on your opponent's turn, um, as long as you have the creatures to tap for it. And mm -hmm. the crew, uh, when the vehicle is a creature it does get summoning sickness so you can't attack with it the turn that you play it mm -hmm. Correct. Um, unless it has like haste but we included a couple different ones because vehicle is going to be is a, a card type that we're going to be seeing from since kaladesh i believe yeah so yeah, were vehicles were introduced in kaladesh a couple, a couple every set yeah vehicles were introduced in kaladesh um and we haven't seen it every set but it is a reoccurring thing that they've brought back several times so the first time we saw it was in kaladesh and then we saw it again when they brought out ixalan stuff yep. and, and we, we have two vehicles in m20 do we we have one we have the submarine that has no evasion that's from War of the Spark, and then we say, have War of the Spark. And then yeah, we there have, were vehicles that came out War of the yeah, Spark. Yeah, two vehicles. There was the red, the the Mizium tank, and the the submarine. And then there was the the white Parhelion. The Parhelion. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So vehicles is something that they they've brought out, but they said that vehicles were going to be something that they did kind of um, at their at their leisure. Uh, one of the cool things about vehicles it is does kind of feel like piloting a vehicle when you're playing. Yeah. Because it takes the the crew ability. And it turns it into a, then a vessel that you can do something with. Mm -hmm. So generally it's going to turn itself into a creature and then it gets either a static ability or some kind of activated or triggered ability. Um, we have Smuggler's Copter here because it has a triggered ability that allows it to loot. It's called the Looter Scooter for a reason. And then Heart of Kirin is interesting because you can use Planeswalker loyalty to crew Heart of Kirin instead of creatures. Yes. So you can take the loyalty counters off your Planeswalkers and reduce... Um, one planeswalker by one, and then turn it into a four four, and then conquers galleon. It's it has a triggered ability that when it I believe, when it attacks and then it uh it flips into a land that has mm -hmm. a whole bunch of acti activated abilities on it. And it's a pirate ship, which is it is the a huge why pirate it's cool. ship. It's got a <laughs> ten toughness. It's a ten toughness creature. That's insane. Well, it just ensures that when you attack with it, it's basically not. It's gonna not die. gonna die. <laughs> Um, another important thing to note about vehicles as well is just because it has like the, for example, a smuggler's copter, it has a crew one, doesn't mean that you can't use a greater power yeah. to crew it. So for example, if all you have on your field is a 2-2, two -two, you can use the 2-2 two -two to crew it. Um, additionally, there were some other cards from the Kaladesh and Aether Revolt uh, box block that uh gave you certain bonuses with vehicles. So there was like a, a veteran motorist that said if you mm -hmm. used it to crew a vehicle, it got plus one, plus one. You could hold that guy up because you can crew at instant speed. So you have enough to crew it and you swing in and they say block, uh, you've got Heart of Karen and it's a 4-4 four four and you're flying and you're swinging with it and they block it with a 4-4 four four flyer as well. Well, then you can tap your veteran motorist to make it bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the crew cost is a minimum. Yes. And I believe there were also several creatures that cared about you... Um, that got bigger when you had vehicles in play as well. There were a couple, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. That were kind of played in the vehicle deck that was being played in that form in that standard format. Yeah. Which was really fun. It was a good deck. There was a vehicle deck. It was a lot of fun to play. I may or may not have abused it for like a good six months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. But vehicles are a new type of artifact that came out, like we said, somewhat recently within the last few years that uh, has made a fun addition to the game. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that is pretty much all of the, the major super uh, and subtypes and yeah. regular types of cards. And I hope I that this has helped so. you go through them. Yeah, because we're not going to go over all of the creature types. There's too many. Too many. We could go over obscure ones. That'd be fun. No. <laughs> maybe, maybe in a different episode. My advisor commander deck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about oofs for a minute. I think there's two. <laughs> Thralls. All Thrall deck. <laughs> that might actually be a thing. <laughs> it could work. Or Atogs. Not well. Atogs? No, Atogs couldn't work. <laughs> no. But there's a legendary forum. Atogatog. Yay. 
Anyway, you can hear more about that and more next time on Move to Combat. When next time we're going to have a game for you, an actual commander game, uh, if we can set up the cameras properly, which, which I'm sure we we'll figure this. out. We got it. Uh, and you can check that out norm, uh, back on our normal time on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can tweet us at Add to Combat. You can watch us right here at HTTPS slash slash twitch.tv slash move to combat. I don't know why I read the hypertext protocol, but <laughs> I don't know. Or you can email us at move to combat podcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you like role playing games, you can check out our sister podcast, which is called Brave Yet Stupid, that airs on Saturdays at six thirty. We didn't have an episode last week because I was sick. So I apologize if you if you if you were looking for that and missed it. Um and I swear I wasn't drinking. I was just sick. You was totally drinking. <laughs> no, totally I, drinking. No, I wasn't. I had, a, I had a bad hamburger, I think, as well. Oh, Yeah, I, I didn't cook it right. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for that, like, Why age. are you talking about this? <laughs> Bye, guys. Let's wrap this up. I want to all right, all right. And if you like the music we play on our show, you can check it out at soundcloud.com slash James Scheib. That's J-A-M-E-S-S-H-A-I-E-B. That's me. You could feature featuring a local rapper, Ron Bylas. So that's about it. Anything else you guys want to add before we sign out? Have a nice night, guys. Have a good night, guys. All right, good night. Thanks for watching.